Hi, I'm Mark Baber. I'm the Technical Marketing Manager here in the UK and Ireland for Sony's Photo Channel. Now, I've managed to get my hands on an early sample of the 50mm f1.2 G Master lens from Sony. Now, in this video, we're going to be looking at the lens in a little bit more detail. We're going to do some side-by-side -side comparisons with other lenses, and we're going to show you some demos of how sharp and how fast this lens is. So the FE 50mm f1.2 G Master is now added to the extended range of various native E-mount lenses from Sony. It's actually the 60th E-mount lens of the range. And of course, within the one mount system, this lens can be used on our APS-C range, our full frame cameras, and also our cinema line range of cameras as well. So if you look at the f1.2 aperture, it's half a stop faster than say an f1.4 G Master. Looking at the same comparison, the effective aperture is approximately 17% bigger and covers a surface area of approximately about 36% bigger. When the aperture is increased from say 1.4 to 1.2, it leads to thicker lenses, which can mean that the lens is heavy and slow. Now with this lens, that is not the compromise. It is fast, and handles really well in the hand. When you put the FE 50mm 1.2 G Master uh, and compare it to the FE 50mm f1.4 Zeiss Sony lens, then you're going to see that it's pretty much the same in length at 108mm. It's the same weight at 778 grams. So same length, same weight, but the f1.2 is half a stop faster. The FE 50mm f1.2 G Master gives advances in optical design. Now, it has excellent corner-to-corner -corner resolution, it suppresses chromatic aberration really, really well, and it gives excellent close-up performance. So, for example, macro and portrait shots are superbly sharp. Of course, the background is going to be natural looking and beautiful, so it gives you superb bokeh. Now, it uses three XA lens elements, and the handling is really professional, it's good control, and it's very reliable. It uses four optimized XD linear motors and uses the newly designed compact sized 11 blade aperture unit. Now the autofocus speed is very fast indeed and using the XD linear motors when you're using say touch focus it's able to use this technology to focus really really quickly on subjects in the foreground and the background instantly. Now, superb resolution is maintained right down to f1.2 so when you've got this lens fully open the image is in the center to corner it absolutely pin sharp it's using the newly designed optics that include the three xa uh, or extreme spherical elements so what that basically means is when you look at an mtf chart from say 0 to 20 millimeters over a contrast of say 20 to 100 percent at the maximum aperture you find that it doesn't degrade that much at all. Now when you're using the lens in say backlit scenes to get clear images the Nano AR Coating 2 minimizes any internal reflection so that flare and ghosting doesn't occur. Using three XA or extreme aspherical lenses it minimizes aberrations and gives you that clean bokeh image. The lens is constructed of 10 groups with 14 elements. The newly developed 11 blade circular aperture really enhances the bokeh, the background. The 3x8 extreme spherical elements has 0.01 micron surface engineering, which suppresses the onion ring bokeh as well. So to get that fast, precise, quiet autofocus and tracking, say at extremely shallow depth of field, the lens uses four XD linear motors or extreme dynamic. What this does, it provides the high thrust efficiency needed to accurately position the lens's two large focus groups. And in this floating focus mechanism, it's controlled by its dedicated drive lens algorithm. Those actuators also contribute to quiet focus drive. The internal focusing supports the focus lens drive as well, and the responsive manual focusing 
provides excellent response and fine linear focus control for fast, accurate manual focusing, which is ideal for creative focusing, say, in movies. It's really fast, it's accurate, and it's very, very quiet indeed, which with the camera's AF performance, it includes obviously eye tracking as well as real-time tracking in video. So looking at the lens on the outside, we have a focus ring that's gonna give you linear response, manual focus, for example. It has a focus hold button, focusing when you press the button, and you can also customize via the body menu. It's got a focus mode switch. You can choose manual or to focus without having to look away from the viewfinder. It has an aperture ring, which obviously adjusts the lens aperture and the f-stop is engraved into that. The aperture ring clicks on and off and switches the aperture ring between a third of a step click or seamless control without any clicks. And the exterior of the lens means it's sealed. It's sealed at all the buttons and the rings, so it gives you dust and moisture resistance. And we're using hybrid metal and engineering plastic construction for high durability to keep the weight down. So I've got the 50mm lens and we're going to test it on my dog. So we're going to select animal eye autofocus to see how sharp this can focus on my dog's eye. So uh, just accessing that in the camera and we focus immediately straight on uh, my dog's eye. You can see when it goes green it's uh, taking the shot, when it's white it finds the eye. It's extremely fast. I have to say I've not used a, a G Master lens like this uh, other than the 35mm and the 135 so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to customize the focus hold button, the button on the side of the lens, to APS-C mode. And we're going to go from full frame to APS-C with a flick of a button. And you can see here it's gone from 16 mm to 26. And it's still as fast in APS-C as it is in full frame. Look at that shallow depth of field as well on the nose and in the background as well. The background is completely blurred out whilst focusing on those eyes. As you can see, I took a lot of shots here, but we're going to pick up one and see how far we can zoom in in a second. But I'm really pleased with that, and I crop in uh, post-editing as well. But that's at 60 million pixels. And in post-editing, you can see here, the background and the foreground is completely washed out. It's so soft and uh, creative. So we're going to zoom in as far, far as we can here. And this is 100%. And we're then going to go zoom into 200%. And as you can see from the level of detail here, the sharpness, the moisture around the eyelid, the contrast, the detail in the fur is absolutely sharp. So I took the lens out with me recently when I was testing the lens and I wanted to show uh, the sharpness in landscape. So the lens is pretty much fully open here, but I found an area of the branch that I wanted to focus on and I wanted to see how far I could push post editing the sharpness. As you can see here, straight out of the camera there's 100%, we go to 200%. The level of detail in such a narrow area is extremely sharp. Again, a closer uh, image to the bark here of the tree. Completely washes out the background, which is why this lens is so good with its creative uh, bokeh. And then the area that I'm focusing on, it's only a small area, but the level of detail again is superb. So I can crop in really, really well, especially on the A7R4. Another landscape, not fully wide open. Now this is narrower, I think around f2.8, but there's an area on the branch here of this tree that I saw some moss, and I wanted to see again how far we could push it. That was 100%, now 200%, and now 300%. Again, the level of detail, while still maintaining that very creative background, is superb. So both sharpness and softness at the right points of this lens. We then look at some portraits. This is my son. And again, this is around f3, f3, 3.5. And what I'm trying to do here is trying to keep the face and the hair and the, and the upper part of his body in focus, especially his jacket. A lot of detail in the zip. And it does extremely well. Creases in the jacket, his eyes, both eyes are in focus, even though I'm focusing on the, the closer eye. Uh, his nose, his mouth, the hair, the ear, and again, the detail in his jacket. Really, really good, whilst it maintains a soft background. Now, this is around f2.8. This is my daughter. Now, on this one, I wanted to really distinguish, get her in focus, get the background blurred, but her eyes, both eyes, the nose, the hair on her forehead, the fine hair, and just to show how much detail we can get here whilst retaining the, the jacket detail. And it does it perfectly. Both eyes in focus. No editing here. Straight out of the camera, off the SD card. And whilst you've still got detail in the hair, it separates from the background really, really well. Now, as well as eye autofocus in stills, this is in video. It's automatically doing this. The camera's on the table. I'm not doing anything. It's just finding my son's eye automatically without any prompting. 
And then this is the footage of the back of the camera. As he's moving his head around, it's focusing on the eye. When his eye's not in focus, it's focusing on his face. As you can see, the white box says the face is there. The green is taking the shot. And even though he doesn't look like he had some fun here, but he did, he did give me a smile. But there's one shot I just wanted to show here. When you zoom into the camera, the picture in picture shows you the area I'm focusing on. This is in the camera, 300%. It's incredibly sharp. Both eyes there. And then in post-editing, uh, we have a look at how far we can push this one and we zoom into around 100% on this camera and uh, you can see here the level of detail again both eyes but we push it even further now to 200% and as well as just the main point here is the eyes in focus the eyebrows the eyelashes the veins the skin detail the detail in his skin is really reproduced fantastically well with this lens so as you can see from the video, this is an absolute gem of a lens. And I have to say the center to corner sharpness is class leading in the range. It's fantastic for stills and video, and I highly recommend it as a superb portrait and landscape lens for sharpness.